that love of Pat's two cents. I had a dream last night. Oh, and this was interesting, y'all. I don't know who you are, but you better watch who you're trying to hook up with. I don't know if it's male or female, but in the dream, the star of the show was a male. Hmm. Now, in this dream, this was, to me, indicative of red flags flying off like the 4th of July. Pio, pio, pio. All kind of fireworks, baby. But they were red flags. They weren't pretty fireworks. And they were busting loose. Let me share this with you. Mm -hmm. I learned to pay attention to these dreams because if they're not for me, and I doubt if they're for me because I'm not looking at anybody. My sweet pea is up there with the Lord. So I'm not shopping. But some of you guys, some of y'all are shopping around. Mm -hmm. And you shop till you drop, don't you? Especially when it comes to uh, that sweet somebody, that that other side of you, the one who you say completes you. Yeah, right, whatever, don't go for the bull. Listen, I'm being silly, but listen to this. In this dream, there's a man sitting on the couch. Gets up, sits on the recliner. He's laid back. I mean, he's kicking back, reclining big time. I walk up to him. Now, I know I represent somebody, one of you. I don't know who you are. Listen to the details of the dream. I walk up to him and I say, oh, here, here, let me fix you this. This tastes good. Try this. And the guy sits there starting to eat. And he's like, oh, that's good. Well, what happened to the to the biscuits? What happened to the sausages? What happened to the gravy? I mean, you know, we got to put this thing together right. And I'm looking at him like, number one, you're not my man. Number two, I'm doing this to be nice. Number three, I got somewhere to go. I got something to do. I got people to see. And it ain't you. So don't get beside yourself because I don't have to do this. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm being nice. All right. So he's he acts like he's joking, but I could tell had that little inner eye that's connected to God. That discerning eye told me, boyfriend ain't joking. He's serious. And if he's do if he's like this, y'all ain't even dating. Imagine what he's gonna be like when you date. Imagine how much worse is gonna get if you married a boy. Hmm. Okay. So listen. So he said, well, you know, where's my so-and-so? Where's my... And I'm looking at him like, you got two legs and two feet. Get your lazy behind up and get it yourself. That's what I'm thinking. Being nice. My mouth is sealed. I'm being saved. Yes. So anyway, so then I stand there and I look at him. And I don't know who this pertains to. Because my mother's been gone since 1982. And I tell him... My mother's in the hospital. The caretaker that's there is not going to be able to take care of her, and I'm going to have to start taking care of her. Something like that. I'm not too clear, but it was like whoever was there is not going to be able to continue, and she's in bad shape, and I'm worried about her. And all he could think about was, do they have any so-and-so in the refrigerator? Check and see if they got so-and-so. Do you have any cookies? I was like, I couldn't believe my ears. I could believe my eyes because I could tell brother man was greedy. Yes, glutton greedy. <laughs> Eating like it was going out of style greedy. And I couldn't believe he never mentioned my mother. He never mentioned the urgency. He never said, what can I do to help? Hmm, if any of you are out there messing, flirting, toying with some dingbat out there, number one, doesn't have a job, number two, doesn't have a car, number three, doesn't have anything going for himself, and he thinks he's going to lay back, hmm, <laughs> and you're going to be the one serving him, 
with a silver platter, you better run, baby, run. Because if he's like that now with a smile, he'll be like that later with a punch. Trust me on that. It starts with charm. It starts with humor. Mind the red flags. Be mindful. That's what I'm trying to say. Of the red flags that are right before your eyes, that are piercing your ears. See, you not only listen and watch for what they do and what they say, you listen and watch for what they don't do, what they don't say. They don't offer to help you pick something up. They don't stick around to make sure you're safe before they go home. They don't watch your back. Oh, they're not thinking about you, baby. They got you to look after them because they're all about them. Watch yourself. You watch it. Let me share this with you. Now, I know I'm always talking about my hubby, but I had a good one. What can I say? Listen to this example. My husband was 100% blind, right? I wanted to become a prison chaplain. I talked to him about it. He thought it was a great idea. We prayed about it. Go for it, baby. There was a glitch. The class was in that was in Los Angeles, somewhere south in the central area of Los Angeles, something like that. Now he had a problem with that. He said, you know, I think it's a good idea for you to take the class, but in all honesty, I really don't want you driving out there, not by yourself. Now, I could have jumped on that, but I didn't say anything. The Bible says, be slow to speak and swift to hear. So I listened and I kept my mouth sealed. I kept my attitude out of it too, because I had to see where was he going because he was a reasonable man who would always make sure he had my back. So I wanted to see where this was going. Hmm. So I waited. Conversation dropped a minute. What are we having for dinner? Blah, 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 blah. He makes a phone call. He calls Metro Access, ask a few questions. He says, okay, Pat, now on Wednesday, that's when the class is, right? Right, okay. So what we're, no, it was Tuesday and Thursday, two nights a week. He said, this is what we're going to do. I want you to be able to take your class, but I don't want you driving to L.A. So what we're going to do is I will call Metro Access and set up for them to pick me up because he was blind. He had that access to that privilege because of his disability. So he calls Metro Access, gets the address from me, tells them where we're going, what time they need to pick us up and arrange us to make sure that we know we have a ride back from LA that we'll be able to, you know, whatever number we're to call when we're about to come home. That Wednesday, that Tuesday, excuse me, that Tuesday night, Metro pulls up. We, not me, not him, we hop in the car. My husband skips all of his TV programs, eats an early dinner, rides with me all the way into L.A., sits in a three-hour classroom that has nothing to do with him in order to enable me to fulfill my desire, my dreams, my goals. It had nothing to do with him. Came back, never complained about the class being boring. How long is the class going to be? It's getting on my nerves now. I want to see my program. Never once, not once complained. Not once. I'll never forget him doing that. Every time we had the class, twice a week, he rode with me to L.A., sat through a three-hour class, rode all the way back. That was a, an, an average of four to four and a half hours of his time that he did not have to give up, sitting there through stuff, nodding and doing all that, trying to stay away for the classroom so I could finish my course. How many of you men with eyesight and perfect health would have even thought to do something like that? Change your schedule. 
for the sake of your wife, change your schedule for the sake of your girlfriend or that, that the, the person that you're leaning towards. Come on. Which one of you would have even thought to do something like that? He did that with me we, when we got to the school, to the campus. It was a church campus. We had to climb a long flight of stairs, about 20 steps, to get up to the classroom. I had to guide him all the way. And for a blind person, steps are intimidating. He did that twice a week for months on end. Now, I say this to you. If you can't find somebody that has your best interest at heart, drop them like a pair of dirty drawers. You don't need them. You're not that desperate. You're not that hard up. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and see what the Bible says real love really is what real love acts like, what real life love quacks like, what real love walks like, how real love behaves, how considerate and thoughtful real love is. That's what you have to check out. If you don't know what real love is, tell God and ask God to show you how to recognize it when you see it. Don't see it as weakness. That will be to your dismay. Do not see it as weakness. Real love is kind, thoughtful, patient, giving, considerate, peaceful, merciful, understanding, long-suffering, not demanding its own way, not self-centered, not all about me, 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 me. What about me? 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 Oh, no, that ain't love, baby. Okay. Now that you've had your class on what love is and what love ain't, have a good night. And please, drop them like a dirty pair of drawers. I don't care if it's male or female. I don't care if you're male or female. If you got somebody you think out there that, that you just got to have and all they think about is them, they never think about how tired you are, you made a sacrifice, why don't we skip tonight so you can get some rest? No, 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 they can't think of that because they need this and they need that. So what time you coming? Well, what took you so long? Oh, no, 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 no. Red flags, baby. Boom, 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 bam, 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 bam. Cut it, cut it. Cut it like an umbilical cord. Cut that sucker loose, male or female. Cut them loose. Hmm. Let God do the choosing, baby. Because what you looking at, I don't think so. Pray about that.